Well, hello, this is Tom McLeish from Durham University. Now, I'd really like to be with you at Faith in Scholarship, but as a second best, it's a great pleasure to be able to record a few uh, thoughts, as I've been asked to, on how a Christian worldview might actually assist someone who's doing science. It's an unusual, perhaps, idea to suggest, because normally we hear the old story of a conflict between science and Christianity, but let's see um, what we might discover uh, if we think biblically about what science really requires and what it means and what it's for. First thing to, thing to say is that uh, science requires huge courage and imagination um, and also confidence that this extraordinary task that we're trying to do to set ourselves to do, which is to reimagine, to reconstruct, to reconfigure in our minds, in our models, the deep structure, the causal structure, and the function of the universe. And yet, it's that hope that's recorded in the biblical wisdom literature. Read the Hymn to Wisdom of Job, chapter 28. That idea that humans and human minds are particularly gifted in the same way that God's wisdom looks into the interior of the world's structure to discover it and to perceive it for, for themselves. Secondly, the core creative activity in science is the question, not finding the answers. Every great scientist has said this. Einstein said it, Heisenberg has said it, Everyone has said how important creative questions are. And a biblical worldview takes you to the question all the time. Who do people say that I am? What is truth? Do you know the way to the storehouses of the hail? That last one, and of course over 160 other questions about nature, are to be found in that book of Job again, in the Lord's answer from chapters 38 onwards. So someone who thinks biblically is no stranger to the creative question. Third, science is hard. Science is painful. The years of disappointment of creating an experimental or a theoretical paradigm that isn't getting anywhere yet, of being scooped, of just finding out your precious ideas are plain wrong. It's perhaps a little easier to take the difficulty if it's something we expect. And that's something that the Bible story tells us to expect because every place, every place, apart from one in the Bible where human relations with the natural world are described is in the context of pain. Take Genesis 3 and the thorns and the pains of childbirth. Take the book of Proverbs, full of our relationship with nature and yet a painful book. The great book of Job itself is all about, well, one of the things it's about is pain. Take St Paul's description of the cosmos and of all creation groaning as in the pains of childbirth as we establish a healthy and not a damaging relationship with it. Fourth. To be a scientist requires us to change what we believe, even what we most dearly believe, in the light of evidence. This is very hard to do, and it gets harder the more you think you know and the more other people in the scientific world tell you that they think you know. It takes courage to change one's mind, to turn around, to be converted. But of course, the Bible is full of experience of that. And if one has already been so converted in one's world view as to live not for self but for Christ, as Paul puts it, if you can change your mind that strongly, then the dropping of treasured hypotheses for new ideas or even for the search for new ideas in science, perhaps isn't quite so hard after all. 
Fifth idea, perhaps, is that to do science, actually, of course, to be engaged in any communal activity, um, is better done humbly uh, than to lord it over people. I remember the um, first time I heard about the idea of servant leadership and saw it, of course, um, primarily in the person of Jesus. A good friend of mine um, from uh, a, a college days set up his own business and he used to say that really a Christian worldview sets you up in business for life. It's because you think about others and what their needs are. The way you build and work and encourage teams through those difficult times we talked about before is also something that's nurtured in a Christian worldview. Turns out to be exactly what you need in a science team of people who may have different backgrounds, different languages, come from very different presuppositions, but are together engaged in this difficult work of understanding nature. And lastly, I suppose it sums up the last few things I've said, is that engaging with nature, replacing ignorance with knowledge, replacing fear um, with wisdom, as people, as in the ancient centuries, as, as Venerable Bede have said about thinking about nature, and closer to our own times, Marie Curie expressed her reason for doing science as just that, and thirdly, to replace the mutual harm that nature does to us and that we've increasingly learnt we do to nature with mutual flourishing. All that purposeful, teleological, if you like, view of science situates it as a work of love. Not something perhaps we often <laughs> frame science with, but nonetheless, that's what it is. So, Six reasons, perhaps, to develop why science as being birthed from an ancient Judeo-Christian path of engaging with nature can also draw practical outcomes uh, in its development, in its work today.